Hi everyone, intuitive and astrologer Lisa Salvatore here to talk to you about the total solar eclipse that takes place on April 8th. And there is a lot to get into. There is a lot to say about this. It's even been overwhelming for me to come on here and record about the solar eclipse because there's so much that I want to get into, more on the spiritual level of how significant this is. But first, before you even go into this video, I highly suggest that you go and watch the reading for the lunar eclipse, the Libra full moon that we have taking place on March 25th. Now I am recording this video on March 21st, so you have some time. So you're probably going to want to listen to that lunar eclipse reading first because this is all going to connect and this eclipse is a mere two weeks after the lunar eclipse and it is a part of the story. It might even be the climax of the story. Maybe a brand new beginning. It could be a catalytic ending. So I highly suggest that you go back and listen to the lunar eclipse reading first. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so that you're notified of all new uploads and you can find all of my information in the description box below. Don't forget that I offer private consultations, psychic readings, astrology readings, a combination of the two. And I still have some spaces left in my calendar for April. So go and check that out. Again, the links are in the description box below. First things first, do you know the areas of your life, of your astrology chart, where Aries and Libra fall? If you don't, and nor do you care to know that, totally fine. Just keep listening. If you do know, Follow along because these are the areas of your life that are being impacted by these eclipses. This is where the energy will flow. I am quickly going to show you how to identify Aries and Libra in your birth chart. And I'm going to show you actually by going through my website because you can download your birth chart through there. Okay, so what you're gonna do is go to my website, lisasalvatore.com. And again, it's linked in the description box below. And you're just gonna scroll down on the homepage and click free birth chart, bypass that, and just pop in your data. And again, I'm totally making this up just to get us some data. Okay, and then you're gonna create the chart and it's gonna show you, see the signs are all laid out for you around the wheel. It's pretty easy to read. So you will see Libra is the eighth house, okay? And Aries is exactly opposite and that is the second house. So now you know that these eclipses are impacting and have been impacting since last year. Think back to April 20th of 2023 when we had our last solar eclipse in Aries. And note what the second and eighth houses deal with, which are many different things. And we'll get into that when I do the readings at the end of this video. But this is where the eclipses are occurring for Dan, the second and eighth houses, okay? So this is where he will be feeling the impact and the energy of these eclipses. Spiritually speaking, total solar eclipses are a big deal. Eclipses in general are a big deal. They do tend to pull a lot of our energy. They tend to stir up quite a bit of emotion. They catalyze events. Like I mentioned, there's major beginnings and endings around eclipses. But I want to be clear, it doesn't always and typically is not exactly at the time of the eclipse where things happen. We can look for one month prior and one month after the eclipse takes place for that event or for that vital piece of information to be revealed to you. And in some cases, it is immediate, but I want you to allow yourself the time one month out on either side, and a full six to see the changes that the eclipses precipitate, to see those changes actually settle in and settle down. So again, this is different for everybody based upon your personal birth chart. Collectively speaking, it's a whole nother ballgame. So let's first get the technicalities out of the way. This eclipse that's occurring on April 8th is a total solar eclipse. It's total. And this is why everybody's traveling to go and see this eclipse. It is visible over quite a portion of the United States and it goes into portions of Canada, areas that have not seen this type of eclipse activity since 1979. A solar eclipse can only happen around the time of a new moon, solar, that's the sun. And when we have a new moon, it's when the sun and the moon align with each other in the sky. This is how we have a new moon. The lunar eclipse, lunar is moon, so the lunar eclipse is around the full moon, always. And eclipses happen at the nodes of the moon directly opposite of each other. Eclipses come in pairs. Sometimes there's a third one not far behind. And they always happen on the same axis for about 18 months, an 18-month time span. So we've been under the Aries and Libra axis. In order to have a solar eclipse, this is a new moon. It's where the moon stands between the sun and the earth, completely blocking out the light of the sun. It cuts off our power supply metaphorically speaking, hopefully not literally, it cuts off the power supply. The sun is our life force. It's our vitality. It's our energy. It powers everything. It's the center of the universe. So when you think about the word eclipse, the moon eclipses the sun. This is not a partial eclipse where it's a portion of the sun. 
It's not an annular eclipse, which happens every one to two years. The total solar eclipse is a special situation. So spiritually speaking, what this can do to us on the physical level is it can make us feel like our bodies are holding a lot of energy. Our bodies can be acting out. Our emotions can be wigging out. We can feel this heightened sense of awareness and intuition. And like the air is electrifying, there's an electricity to the air. You will notice around eclipses that the animals act differently. It's like they're seeing something that isn't there. They're sensing something. Their instincts are that much more instinctive, as are ours as human beings. The more sensitive you are, the more you're going to feel this. Now, again, it's important to note, and we're going to go into the chart, that because this is a solar eclipse in the sign of Aries, it takes place at 19 degrees. If you have any of your points or placements, especially the sun, the moon, or your rising sign, between 17 and 21 degrees of Aries, or of Libra, you're really going to be feeling this energy. Also, if you're Leo, because Leos tend to always feel solar eclipses because this is when the sun is being obscured by the moon. And Leo is ruled by the sun. The sun is the ruler of Leo. So especially if Leo is your rising sign, you would really feel the energy that much more around solar eclipses. Lunar eclipses, it would be Cancer because Cancer is ruled by the moon. But we're gonna stick to the solar eclipse here. So again, Aries and Libra most definitely, especially if your points and or placements fall between 17 and 21 degrees. Also any of the cardinal signs, which are also Capricorn and Cancer. So Aries, Libra, Capricorn, Cancer. And even more strongly, if you fall between 17 and 21 degrees. We are all gonna feel the energy of the solar eclipse, make no mistake. But those that I just described are likely gonna feel it that much more strongly. And that can be a good thing. I don't want you to have any fear attached to the solar eclipse. No fear mongering. We're vibing on the positive. We're vibing on the light of the sun that when it comes back on, something very important comes into our reality because it is a new moon. So it's a new moon on steroids. Think of it that way. New moons bring in the new. There can be beautiful new beginnings succeeding a solar eclipse, but preceding the eclipse, there might be a very significant ending or a very strong passage of time. Something happens and it can be unexpected. It can feel jarring but you can trust that it's always meant to pull you on your path, on your true north, because that is what eclipses do. They can only take place on the nodes of the moon. Aries is the north node right now, Libra is the south node. So we're moving toward the north node, the Aries part of our lives, of our chart, and we're releasing that which does not serve us around the Libra areas of our lives and of our charts. And speaking of that in an even more broad manner, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It is the sign of individuality. This is about having courage and strength to do the things we need to do for ourselves, to be authentically ourselves, to take ownership for our life, for our reality, and to take action where necessary and to have faith. And even when we feel scared, it's about showing up and doing the work anyway. The North Node promises tremendous growth, but it's never easy. Now the South Node, which is currently taking residency in the sign of Libra, this is important because this is also significant because Libra rules over connections. Libra rules over relationships of all kinds, contracts, agreements, whether they're verbal, whether they're written, whether they're literal or spiritual. It's about keeping the peace. It's about harmony. It's about balance. And so the imbalance in relationships and relationship dynamics is going to be very prevalent. And it likely is the continuation of an ongoing story for you by where Aries and Libra fall on your chart or in some cases, it's an ongoing saga. So think of this lunar eclipse revealing for you, this full moon lunar eclipse that takes place March 25th, revealing something for you. And again, it might just be something that comes to you through your own reflection. The new moon is where we can see the new coming forth. Now, I always say I do not like to work with eclipse energy. I will not do a ritual. I did my ritual around the equinox. I'm good until my birthday now with rituals. And the reason being is eclipses serve as a wild card. They're wild, lunacy. The power sources, the sun and the moon, are being tampered with around an eclipse, okay? The gravitational pull is that much more strongly affected around eclipses. This energy magnetizes everything. Solar activity is increased. Seismic activity can and most likely absolutely will be increased. And I would especially keep my eye around May, the end of May, and I'm gonna tell you why when we get to the chart. This again just goes to show you that a lot of times with eclipses, things come up about one month after, one month prior, one month after. So like I was saying, I don't like to do a ritual around eclipses. I like to be in a state of flow. I like to take extra special care of my system around eclipses, and I highly suggest that you do the same. So ground, keep yourself grounded. Get out into nature. Get extra rest. Don't take on too much. Don't put too much on your plate. 
leave yourself some space. I've been saying this for months now, leave yourself some space because things are likely going to crop up that you were not expecting. And again, these can be things of the best kind, but still, you don't want to overload your schedule. You want to leave yourself some room. I also, again, want to emphasize that solar eclipses tend to create new opportunities, but they might not seem as wonderful for you at the time, but I mean, in some cases they will, but sometimes they won't. And you will see that later on, that it's a part of your path, your fate. So again, eclipses can bring in new life events and big changes. And if it's not to you directly, it could be to somebody in your reality, but it still affects you. And it's also important to note that eclipses often can and will bring in information to you that you were not expecting or a very random event can bring this information to you that you're not expecting or a situation that you're not expecting. And it can be brought to you by something that's completely outside of your control. Again, this is how eclipses operate. But it's like the universe is delivering change right to your doorstep, metaphorically speaking, or sometimes literally. I've seen a lot of really interesting spiritual happenings to my clients around eclipses, myself as well. And sometimes it's nothing. But the purpose of the eclipses, spiritually speaking, is to shine a light into an area of our life, the area of our life that is being impacted or touched by these eclipses. And in this case, it's by where Aries and Libra fall in your birth chart. Truth is being served. Libra is the sign of truth and justice, and the South Node's all about release and letting go. So again, whatever is revealed to you around these times is going to have a hand in helping you to release anything and everything that is imbalanced or that is not working for you, for your soul. It's going to help you. It's going to help you put you on the right track, provided that you heed the lessons, provided that you lean into it and you look at it as instead of why is this happening? It's more like, well, what is happening and how can I best manage this? How can I integrate this? So again, there can be just changes of direction, things that you didn't see coming, reroutes, endings, beginnings, openings and closings. Events that occur around total solar eclipses will always hold more weight. They will always carry more gravity, a lot more, both metaphorically and literally speaking. They will always carry more gravity than just the events around a typical new moon. So take your time with any and every decision that needs to be made around these next couple of weeks. Try not to push yourself. Try to see the magic and the blessings in all of the lessons. You may or may not really feel this one that significantly, or you may. Now we are going to continue to have eclipses here until March of 2025. So again, you're going to want to pay attention, journal around what is happening right now. What has been happening since the beginning of this year? And if you want to go one step further, go back to April of last year. And if you want to go even one step further, like I mentioned in the lunar eclipse video, go back to 2005 and six, if you can, if you can remember. I know I wasn't, you know, that young and I can't really remember too much that significantly occurred at that time. I do remember some things, though, that make sense with by where Aries and Libra fall in my birth chart. So you may want to go back and check that out as well. So again, this is a major part of your story. And this is a major part of the story of the United States. So each eclipse in the series is going to act like another piece to the puzzle. I like to look at it like the game of Scrabble. You have the tiles, the letter tiles and you're creating words, but sometimes you don't have the right letter and you have to keep digging back into the bag and foregoing your turn in order to make that word. I bring this up because I want you to remember something. Words mean nothing, but actions do. And eclipses tend to be where the words match the action, whether that's intentional or unintentional. So keep vibing on the positive as best as you can keep your words constructive speak about what you would like speak about what you're working toward try to vibe on that the universe hears you and the universe will support you as best as it can under by what's good for you what's truly good for you and what's karmically right for you again this is eclipse energy now, again, like I mentioned, this eclipse is crossing a very large portion of the United States. And it's always more of my concern to speak to the personal and spiritual effects of the energy, because it's what we do personally, which also ripples out into the collective. We cannot control what goes on outside of us, right? But we can control what goes on in here. So I tend to try to focus on that. But here's the link to NASA.gov so that you can see the map. It'll tell you the duration, totality, the time. It'll be a lot faster than if I go through all of it for you. And then here you can also see for Canada. All right, so let's get to the chart. So here we have the new moon total solar eclipse taking place in the sign of Aries. It's right here, 19 degrees and 24 minutes of Aries. That's how we have the new moon. 
And we can see right here that we have Chiron exactly conjunct the sun and the moon. So Chiron is a massive player here in this eclipse, okay? Chiron's at 19 degrees and 24 minutes of Aries as well. So what does that mean? Chiron is known as the wounded warrior or the wounded healer in astrology. And Chiron speaks to a pain point, to an emotional ouch, to a wound that just doesn't quit, to something that we feel very deeply inside of ourself, inside of our soul. It's always there. And we will always be reminded of it. I always talk about Chiron, like when you put a Band-Aid over a gaping cut, and when the Band-Aid's on that cut, it doesn't hurt. The minute you try to pull off a piece of that Band-Aid and the air gets into that cut, it hurts, it stings. That's how Chiron operates. But the purpose is to rip that Band-Aid off and heal that wound. We all have a Chiron. And the Chiron wound here around this eclipse that might come up for you is definitely going to be something that's come up before, and it's definitely something surrounding your identity either in one specific relationship or a situation, or just something personal and internal where you don't feel like you're doing right for yourself, and the same thing comes up again and again and again. There's a pain point here, so pay attention to it. Pay attention to your triggers, or like I like to say, glimmers, because those triggers are glimmers into healing that still needs to be done. We don't want a spiritual bypass, okay? We don't want to just put that sparkly spiritual band-aid over it and say everything's fine when in reality we know we still need to heal this piece of ourselves so that we can move forward. Now Eris is over here at 24 degrees of Aries and Eris is the goddess of discord, okay? She's all about truth and justice and everybody being heard and everybody having their voice and their say. But Eris is also an instigator. If you know your mythology, she instigated the Trojan War. And here's the thing. Eris being so close to Chiron and to this total solar eclipse is saying that we will be feeling like people or situations are poking at us and provoking us, trying to get us angry. That's Aries, right? That's the shadow to Aries. Anger. Aries is ruled by Mars. This is about action. This is about force. Aries is also the god of war. Mars is the god of war. So where do we go to war? And what do we go to war for? Who do we go to war for? Hopefully that's not literal, but this could be within the self. So Eris is here poking at us poking at Chiron, demanding that something comes up into our awareness and has likely been percolating for the past few months, if not the past year. And yeah, sure, maybe it goes away for a little while, but then it comes back. Okay, again, think about the Aries part of your chart here. It's being tenderized. And let's not forget that Mercury is now retrograde at 24 degrees of Aries. So Mercury's in this mix, aligned with Eris, mixed messages, mixed communications, anger, in some cases, rage. So we have to pay attention to that. We have to pay attention to what's really jarring us emotionally, what's getting us going. Also, positively speaking, what's getting us motivated? What are we passionate about? Again, that's all this Aries energy. Aries is a go-getter, ruled by the ram. It rams through to get what it wants. And then, of course, we see the north node of 15 Aries. Like I mentioned, we can only have a solar eclipse near the nodes of the moon. And so here's the north node in Aries, 15 degrees. We've got Venus now also in the early degrees of Aries. And what's nice about this is that Venus is harmonizing with Pluto in Aquarius. And so this can just bring in a depth of emotion and intensity into our relationships and into our dealings and also into anything that we're doing with our finances. Okay, so this is a very strong time for financial planning because we're also building up to a Jupiter Uranus alignment on April 20th. And I'm going to come back with another whole video on that. But that's important. So pay extra attention to your money right now, your personal finances, your investments, your loans. Venus and Pluto can also be speaking to intensity of emotion and depth with relationships, some spiciness. This could be very positive. But again, it's passion. And with all this Aries, it could bring up some challenges in relationships that still need to be sifted through, sorted through. And this likely won't be the first time. Consequently, new relationships can come in under this energy. And like I mentioned about Jupiter and Uranus, you see them up here. Jupiter is moving towards Uranus and they're going to meet exactly at 21 degrees on April 20th. And again, I'm going to come back with a whole nother video on that shortly because this is a good one that you're going to want to know more about. But I also want to pull focus onto the Saturn-Mars conjunction that we have here around this eclipse. Saturn is going to provide us the fuel and the motivation and the determination along with Mars, even though Mars is not at the height of his power in Pisces, Mars is the ruler of this eclipse because Mars rules Aries. Mars is currently now in Pisces. So the action of Mars might be a little thwarted and it might not be, but it, but it might be. So I have to say it and lined up with Saturn though, it does give us determination and there's a very strong spiritual string that's running through this eclipse. There's a connectedness to source. There's a connectedness to self. There's a connectedness to spirit to tap into. 
You might be having really vivid dreams. I know I've been for the past few months and I'm always a vivid dreamer, but lately they've been like off the chain. So you may find that that's really increased around the time of this eclipse. If you have small children, you may be finding that they're having more nightmares. I know that's been a common theme. And the eclipse, 19 degrees of Aries, is in a square to Ceres, the great earth mother, the great nurturer at 17 Capricorn. And why is this important? Well, Ceres is our food supply. Ceres is crops, grains, agriculture. It's how we get food from overseas. It's how we take care of our soil. It's how we take care of our earth. It's about the weather. It's about the seasons and the cycles of life. And these two are in a square to each other. And it's a total solar eclipse, which can absolutely pull in very strong weather phenomenon. And Uranus and Jupiter are actually trining Ceres, which is a supportive aspect. But still, even though it's a supportive aspect, we're talking about Uranus, which is change, disruption, electricity. Also could be earthquakes, just being real. Seismic activity. We also have a total solar eclipse. Lots going on with the Earth here. Could also bring up seismic activity. And because Jupiter expands everything, okay, that's the shadow side to Jupiter because everything has a shadow side. Jupiter makes it bigger. It inflates it, inflation, expansion, hopefully not, but you know, I'm just giving you all the possibilities here. So Jupiter and Uranus are in a square to Ceres, okay? So again, could we have some type of very large weather event that, that prevents certain stocks from coming to us in form of shortages? I mean, this is not out of the realm of possibilities because we've been hearing about this, because we've been hearing about this for, you know, several years now, food shortages, right? That's not a new thing. Or things that were once available to us are no longer available to us. I know that's been happening. Again, there's also encouragement here to grow your own food. So if this is something that you were thinking about doing, this solar eclipse could really support you actually taking action to do that. Well, let me put it this way. The planets are supporting it with Uranus, Jupiter, trying to series, doing things a different way to make the best use of your resources. Now, you might remember I mentioned earlier, I wanted to show you something that can give you an idea of when we would likely see some sort of a ripple effect from this particular solar eclipse and why something might not necessarily happen right away. Now, I study eclipses. Now, this is something that I've learned throughout my studies of eclipses. This outer wheel here shows you the transits, okay? And I have this for May 26th of 2024. And you can see here, oops, actually it should be May 25th. Okay, so I have this set the transits for May 25th of this year, okay? Which also happens to be the day that Jupiter will enter Gemini. You can see right here, it's at 29 degrees, 58 minutes. So more importantly, over here, you can see Mars. Now Mars is the ruler of Aries, let's not forget. And we always wanna look at when Mars and Uranus trigger the eclipse point, okay? After the fact, when they get to that degree. I hope that makes sense to you. So let me explain. Mars will be at 19 degrees of Aries on May 25th. The eclipse happens at 19 degrees of Aries. Mars is the ruler of Aries, okay? So this further explains the theory and the possibility that some sort of seismic event, hopefully not, some sort of catalytic event might occur right around this, this date. So I would have my eye on the end of May, like May 20th to May 30th to be exact. Again, think about the Aries part of your chart. That might get some activity or some action at that time, or it could be a continuation of something that you hear about around this solar eclipse. Again, it might not be anything. Now, collectively speaking, it's Mars. And Mars is known as the god of war, and Mars is all about fighting, and also, positively speaking, it is motivating, and it's action and energy, but it will conjunct the eclipse point, the total solar eclipse point. So again, there might just be some heightened activity around the 20th to 30th of May, and that's what I was saying earlier about when Mars or Uranus comes to the point of the eclipse by transit. Okay, now, hopefully you're still with me. I know that this is very long. I told you I had a lot to say. I was feeling a lot. I meant to pop this in before and I forgot. So I'm popping it in real quick. I think I already said this, but understanding the new moon's impact and meaning on your natal chart, your birth chart, and in your life is extremely helpful and insightful in guiding you toward fresh starts, setting pointed intentions by knowing where this lands for you in your chart and in your life, and new beginnings, right? So following your inner guidance, your inner compass, is more powerful around these times because the moon is our inner world. It's our soul. It's what's not always illuminated, right? And because we're dealing with a solar eclipse where the moon obscures the sun, the moon becomes a little bit more prevalent under this energy, which means the inner world, our soul, that tug is going to be felt more strongly. Now, I know it says here setting pointed intentions, but again, like I said, I don't like to do 
rituals or intention setting around eclipses, at least not intended intention setting. I hope that makes sense. Here is where this total solar eclipse, new moon in Aries is going to impact your chart, AKA your life, okay? As always, you wanna follow your rising sign because your rising sign sets your whole entire birth chart. You can absolutely follow your sun sign, but your rising sign is going to feel more accurate. So if you're Aries rising, obviously this is extremely significant for you because Aries would be your first house. That's you, that's your expression, that's your physicality, that's your health. So definitely take care of your health, your emotional health, your physical health, your spiritual health. Don't push the envelope. Doesn't mean anything's gonna happen. It just means that the energy is more volatile. It's in your sign. Major changes could be coming in for you of the best kind, but you wanna be able to receive them by taking the best care of yourself possible and staying aware of everything and anything that's coming in and out of your reality right now and acceptance is a key word for you right now. Letting go to grow, letting go of perceived failures and obstacles, and knowing that everything that's happening for you is right on par with your destiny, with your true north, with your soul. If you're Taurus rising, this is taking place in your 12th house. So the 12th house is a very spiritual space, and it's also a place of solitude. I always talk about the 12th house like soul solitude. Anytime we have 12th house energy, we need to recharge a little bit more, okay? So for Taurus rising, you're also a sign that's very physical. You're all about the body. You're all about the five senses. So it's very important for you to be grounding yourself under these energies. You're likely feeling it. You probably need to ground more. Get outside into nature. Take deep cleansing breaths. Take care again of your physical body. Make sure you're eating to support your system. Watch your vices. The 12th house is also a space where we can tend toward more escapism. So we wanna watch our vices and make sure to take some time for spiritual retreat, rest. Take inventory of all of the changes you've experienced over this last year and embrace the new. For Gemini rising, this is going to take place in your 11th house of community, friendships, groups and associations, networks. It's also a space where we hold on to our hopes and our dreams and our wishes and we really see what's possible for ourselves, for our future, and we really recognize those spaces where we don't feel welcome any longer or maybe where we feel like we have to end specific relationships or where there's imbalances in specific relationships. All of that's going to be coming up under this energy and likely has been. But positively speaking, there can be a lot of beautiful new opportunities that come in for you through group work, through networking, groups that you're a part of. There could be some beautiful collaborations that are happening or that are coming in. So again, just embrace the new. Cancer rising, this is taking place in your 10th house of career, public image, reputation, the way you are out in the world. I also feel that for some of you, it can be a very important time for a masculine energy in your life, meaning somebody might be sick and there could be some very important news that comes up around that, around this eclipse. I feel like it's something you already know about. That part doesn't feel unexpected, so don't panic, don't go into fear mode. It could also be an emotional situation that's coming to a boil, that's coming to a head with a masculine energy in your life, a father figure, a boss, an authority figure. So it might not actually be impacting you directly, but it could be impacting that person in your life. You could also have some really beautiful career situations occurring for you, or maybe you're becoming a parent for the first time. There could be a pregnancy here, something new coming in in these areas. Leo rising, this is taking place in your ninth house. This is a very spiritual space. It's also a space that's very connected to truth. So I feel like there's going to be some cold, hard truths that are being delivered to the Leo risings. Your beliefs might be being challenged and or questioned, as might be your faith. You may have to take some plans and put them on hold as something new emerges. But again, it's all about expansion. So remain in a state of flow and gracefulness. Virgo rising, this eclipse is impacting your eighth house. This is going to feel very emotional for you, okay? And that doesn't have to be negative either. You could just find yourself very nostalgic, clinging on to memories of the past. You may find that you're developing a different type of relationship to grief in your life, in your reality. This could be because you're literally grieving the loss of someone or something, or just because you're re-examining your relationship with grief or mortality. In general, maybe you've been thinking a lot about the afterlife. Maybe you've been thinking a lot about your own mortality. This also could have to do with money, loans, debts, joint finances. You could be going against something with family. Very deep, intense emotions could come up for you around this eclipse, but there could also be resolution of a long-standing family drama. So like I said to Taurus Rising, Make sure to take some time to yourself. The eighth house is also a water house. It's very emotional. It requires solitude and recharge and retreat. So take that for yourself. Spiritual healing and physical healing are very strong for you right now. For Libra rising, this eclipse is going to be impacting your seventh house. 
you rule the seventh house. The seventh house is naturally ruled by Libra, okay? This is all about our relationships of all kinds. It's about our connections. It's about mutuality. It's about what we share and who we share with. It's contracts of all kinds, verbal or written. It's the way we show up in our relationships. It's our commitments. So what's coming up for you under this energy is, are you truly connected to all of your commitments? And are you truly committed to all of your connections? Think about it. Whichever way the imbalance goes, it's going to be extremely highlighted under these energies. And a change will soon follow. Perhaps a brand new relationship is lighting up your life. A business partnership. You get the deal. Scorpio rising, this eclipse is impacting your sixth house. Definitely watch your health because the sixth house rules our physical health. It's also our mental health to an extent. So again, take really good care of yourself. Notice the patterns, the obsessive patterns or the things that keep coming up and that keep you up at night and ask yourself why. How can you change things around? Because the sixth house is also our routines, our habits, our daily life. How can you change things around so that you're not in a state of fear? This also could be a time where you decide to really shake up your health routine, your fitness routine, your everyday life. If you have a pet, this eclipse might actually have nothing to do with you and you might have something come up for you with a pet. Maybe you get a new pet. A new pet's brought into your life. It could be something like that as well. Sagittarius rising. This eclipse is impacting your fifth house. The fifth house is the space that's going to talk about fun, creativity, sex, children, whether you have them or you don't, just children in your life in general, your own inner child, your ability to have fun, to, to experience pleasure, to play. You might find around this eclipse that you're being pushed to let go of a specific dream, to let go of a creative project, to let go of a connection that just really isn't going any further, or to let a new one in and have some fun, live a little, depends on what's going on for you new creative projects. You could be receiving information from somebody that wants to invest in you. Pregnancy, fertility, something that you've been vibing on, something that you've been praying for could really show up for you around this time. Sagittarius. Capricorn rising, this eclipse is impacting your fourth house. Okay, this is your literal home. This is your foundation, emotional foundation and physical foundation. The fourth house is also a water house. This speaks to our family, our parents. This is family of origin and also family that we choose. Any important relationship in our life that feels like a family connection will likely be highlighted under this eclipse. Now remember, this could also mean that this isn't necessarily about you, but it's about somebody that you're strongly connected to. Themes around family, ancestry, lineage, this could really be coming up for you around this, around this total solar eclipse. Example. And I was told I was allowed to give this example, although I'll never give a name, of course. I have a client who's a double Capricorn, Capricorn Sun, Capricorn Rising, and they've been going through it the last couple of years. There's been a lot of change in their life, unexpected change, and they're really trying to roll with it and they're doing great. He recently told me that he found out that he had a brother and he's in the process of searching for his brother. Interestingly enough, he found out about his brother last May, right after the solar eclipse in Aries. Okay, and so since then he's been trying to locate his brother and he's got a pretty big event scheduled right after this eclipse. So you see how eclipses can be a big part of the story, endings and beginnings. Just wanted to give you an example because it's his fourth house. So that makes sense. That's your family, that's your foundation, that's your roots, your ancestry, your lineage. Again, I will stress pregnancy here because this is family, fertility, new beginnings. Aquarius rising, this eclipse takes place in your third house. So this is gonna speak to the way you express yourself. I'm feeling a lot in my throat chakra as I'm saying this. The way you express yourself, the way you speak, the way you communicate, the way you feel your energy is received by other people in your life, especially those that you are in contact with on the regular. So think colleagues, think your neighbors, think your siblings, okay? Some of you might even have something come up with a sibling or something happens with a sibling that affects you and you're the one helping your sibling. It doesn't feel negative, it just feels like it's pretty powerful. It's a powerful situation. There could also be travel involved here for you, work-related travel, something comes up for you, you get told that now you have to travel for work and it's a surprise, but it ends up being good. It could be something along those lines, but definitely some surprises around the areas of communication and expression and also your work projects. Last but not least, Pisces rising, this eclipse is impacting your second house. And this is the space of your personal finances. This is your value. This is who and what you value. This is your self-esteem. This is your confidence. So this eclipse is really pushing you to roar, to come out and be who you truly and authentically are and not worrying about if you're hurting somebody else by doing what's best for you. As long as you're doing it kindly, South Nodes in Libra, it's all about others and remaining in compassion. As long as you're doing it kindly, and you're staying connected to the truth and to yourself, 
and you're being honest with yourself about what's feasible, what's possible, what's reality, not fantasy, you could have some really powerful and positive sweeping changes entering your life. And there could be some sort of financial freedom coming through for you as well. Some really good news financially could come up. Okay. I'm going to stop this here. I feel like I could keep going. I hope that this supports you on your spiritual journey. Like I always say, we are all in this lifetime together. Stay humble, stay kind, and stay true. But more importantly, be you. That is one of the strongest messages of Aries. And one of the strongest messages of Libra is to be kind, to be fair. May you feel as much in balance as you possibly can as we move throughout eclipse season. And again, all of my links are below. Take really good care of yourselves. 